Good evening, everyone. Welcome to my channel. Tonight I'm doing the Spitfire issue 70. Now, then I'm doing the Terminator issue 120, the last issue. We'll see how that goes. And my co host is P40F20. Right, Eagle Squadron. Time once again to go toe to toe with Jerry. Man your kites and off to battle with the Hun Blighters. Over to you, Captain Langley. Thank you, P4F20. Right. I believe we've got two comments so far. Yes, we do. We have Dave Mack, also known as Not Chris. Good evening, Eagle Squadron. It's time once again to terminate the Jerry's. Oops, got the, there we go. And again from Dave Mack, good luck with your build, Adrian. Thanks for joining us, uh, Thanks, not Dave Chris. Mack. Yes. Right, let's step into the build. Okay, tonight, with issue 70, we are assembling and fitting the rudder. For all you label on a cable fans, and you know who you are, today we, we will be performing that intricate and delicate procedure. Stay tuned, you won't want to miss it. I, the hairs are already standing on the back of my neck. Well, let us proceed with the parts list check. First off, we have 7001, outer skin of rudder, left side. Right, that's this one. Yes, no, that's the right side. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, it's a switch images, right? At 702. Oh, geez, yeah. There we are, under skin of yeah, left side. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then 702, the outer skin of That's rudder awesome. right side. Yep, and that's past it again. And the print on it is almost a mirror image. Yeah, that's what I was noticing just before the broadcast. One side of that rudder has got to be painted wrong, because they definitely wouldn't be mirror images of each other. That's for sure. Uh, then we have 7003, rudder trim tab, left side. That is one of these, and it looks like this one here. The one with the two pegs on it. Yes. And then we have That's 704. Runner trim tab, right side. That's this one here. And all these there we go. Macy's plastic at the moment. Then we have 7005 details for rudder A to C. That's the little black sprue. Yep. A, B, and C. Yep. Then we have 7006 fixing plates. Two times D and two times E. Right, yes. And what they're about sending it before. That's and now the exciting and now the exciting bits are coming up. Seventy oh seven, the tail navigation light. Basically plus piece for you. On how that's then, going to be looking up, lighting up. Then we have 7008, 
the aerial support. Right, okay, this, this feels metal. Then we have, then we have 7009, two pins. I can tell you those, those are slippery little devils. Yeah, I had a look at them earlier, basically, yes. I dropped one of those many times, but I kept finding it again, fortunately. Then we have it's 70. I surprised it didn't give us the next one, just in case. Yeah, it would have been nice, yeah. Then 7010, two hinge parts. And those, I believe, are metal. Yes, that's that piece. And now 7011, the LED for the tail light. Yep. 7012, the cable label. How many, how many more labels for the cables will we end up having? Latter's well, question. there might be one more because we should be getting an extension cable for the motor. And there may possibly yeah. be more cables that need labels in the base. Finally, yeah. we have, yeah, finally, we have 7013 5 p.m. 2 by 4 millimeter screws, with one I imagine being spare. Yes, there was five, and I've already put the spell away. Alrighty then. If you're ready, we can get started. Step one, take trim tabs 7003 and 7004 and check how they fit together. Apply a little super glue to the pegs on part 7003 and fix the parts together as indicated by the red arrows. While you're working on that, we have uh, a bit more chat from not Chris. I noticed that with the rudder also. And another from Dave Mack. Those pins were a right nightmare to do. Yeah, they were slippery little devils, I found. But eventually I got them under control with a bit of masking tape. Right, hopefully that's nice and set. Alrighty, we can, we can move on then to step two. Fit the pins of the rudder trim tab 7003 into the recess in rudder part 7001. Note the position of the recess in part 7004 as indicated by the blue arrow. 
No, I got some blue tack here, which we call blue tack. I'm going to stick that on top of there. So when I put fittings onto it, they makes a good third. Me. Makes a good third hand. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. Goes up that way because that little notch is backwards. Right. Now on to step three. Remove part B from frame 7005 and check the fit in the recess in part 7004. When you are happy with the fit and have it correctly oriented, glue it in place. Cool, that's going to be fun. Yeah, it's a tiny little part. Yes. I actually tiny. lost I actually lost mine and never found it. Ouch. Knowing exactly what part of it is actually sprue and which is the actual part of it is. So sometimes when it got you to cut something else, they always mark the image, yes, you cut along these lines. Yeah, the way the uh, they have the part oriented in the step three picture doesn't really show you quite what the shape should look like before you glue it in. No. Would have been nice if they would have rotated that anti-clockwise just a bit. Yeah, I think it'd be a little easier if you took it out, yeah. Yeah, that looks like goes like that. Right, okay. I'm gonna have to pick that up again. Right, let's put a bit of blue in that hole. That down the surface. Let's try orientation this again. Got a little bit of chat here from John's model making. Evening all, and again, evening all. E evening all. Hey, John. Thank you for joining us. Right, that's hopefully that's in place. Oh, no. Oh, sugar <laughs> Yeah, you try and put a pressure down, maybe, right? Right, and it's tall and skinny, so it wants to fly out, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. 
little bit of chat from Dave Mack saying good evening to John's model making. Evening, Dave Mack. Oh, of course, yeah. Right, okay, that looks like that is in place. I'm going to put that back down there again. Put that back onto there. Now you might want to consider leaving it to the side. It's up to you uh, because putting in the next couple of pieces can cause it to possibly fall out anyways. Right, okay, yes. So I'm going to pop that back out. And, and we have just and then, another bit of chat from John's Model Making saying... Evening to Dave Mack. All right, on to step four. Take part C from frame 7005 and check how it fits into the rectangular hole in the rudder part 7001. Apply a little super glue to the recess in part 7001 and glue in place. If I remember correctly, I found that to be just a touch of a friction fit, so you'll need to uh, apply just a little bit of force to get that in properly. All right. I'm looking at the part, it's got more of a peg that side compared to that one. Basically, I reckon it could yeah, I think they made it, a, made it a bit asymmetric, so you could only put it in one way. Guess. Right. Where am I going to put the blue? That's the question. And another bit of chat here from John's Model Making. This is a very fiddly issue, but well worth the effort. Yes. Yes, it does look grand once the rudder's mounted on the tail. nicely down in okay if you're ready we'll move on to step five take the aerial support 7008 and check the fit in the slot at the top of the rudder section 7001 when you are happy with the fit glue it in place Actually, I'm studying it to see if there's a certain way around it goes, or doesn't matter. Well, it looks like it's fairly symmetrical. Guess. I don't know. Kind of There, turn it over. Hold it there for a moment. Okay, that's nicely stuck on. 
Okay. That gets the easy bits over with. Now we get to the tricky part with the hinge pins. Step six, take a pin 7009 and fit through the hole in the hinge part 7010. Repeat for the second pin and hinge part inset below. This is where I found it uh, beneficial to have uh, some masking tape or electrical tape uh, handy to kind of keep those pins under control. One of them threaded. I'm going to thread the other one. It's a shame they can just give us one long rod, basically. Actually, no. It would have gotten in the way of the wire, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would have made things uh, possibly a bit easier, just having one log rod running through there, yeah. Now, if you're ready, we can do step seven. Fit the pin of one of the hinge assemblies into the recess near the top of the rudder 7001. Note that the tab on the end of part 7010 points upwards. Glue the pin 7009 in place, but do not get any glue on the hinge part 7010 as it needs to be able to move. And this is where I found it was a, a good idea to use a bit of tape. I, I put the, uh, the hinge and the pin into the slot and then put a piece of tape over one side and apply glue to the other. Because I was having trouble with that pin flying all over the place. It's very loose on that hinge. Of course it needs to be. Yes, right. I put a bit of glue on that little surface and that little surface. Hopefully that might work. Well, give it a shot. Maybe yeah. I'll better luck yeah. than I did. Question is, did I get it in the right place? Right. Hopefully that's caught it. Right. right. I'm going to need that hinge pin there, so hopefully that blue there, or that might blue dry well. We, I believe, might have to do the next one, don't we? Yes, we do. Step eight is glue the pin 7009 of the second hinge assembly into the recess near the base of the rudder part 7001. Again, the tab on the hinge part 7010 points upwards. Do not get any glue on the hinge part 7010. I'm going to put the glue in the same place. Hopefully this works, it'll basically hold it in place while Yeah, that's a fashion hole, slight bigger hole, probably what it needs to be. All right, let's drop that one down there. Let's. let's 
Right, yes, the other one nicely set. What I've done, I've just gently lifted up and it's held it there. So Already I'll, then. I'll check the other one before we... I'll check that in a little while later. Yeah. You can put that uh, whole assembly to one side if you wish. And now we come to the part that everybody has been waiting for. Step nine. Fitting a, ca a label on a cable. Right. Any motor could actually test, like we said, they test it before we fit it. I've always liked to test the motors and like LEDs. I've oh, always right. test them. It's no point me trying to put the LED in there and find out later. That it doesn't work, absolutely. Yes. Check the way the pins and the holes and this plug. Pop that onto there slightly. And let's turn it on. Yep, it works. At least I know it works. Nothing worse than basically the same with the wing, the tail rudder. At least I know it's not a problem with this section. Is this one doesn't work. Right. Okay. Now. I'm just getting the label. Take the cable label. Remove it from its backing paper. And wrap it round the LED cable close to the connector. Okay, that's nicely together. And once again, Captain Langley has successfully completed this very delicate and demanding procedure. We can now move on to step 10. Now, bring back in the rudder assembly that we have been working on. And before you do anything else, you might want to check to make sure that those hinges are free swinging. Yep, they're nice. The pens, pens are nicely fitted. So what I've done is I just lift up the, the arm and it's lift up nice things. Balls back down. Yes. Okay. Fit the LED 7011 into the shaped area on the tail edge of the rudder part 7001. The rim of the LED fits into the recess between two of the shaped ribs on part 7001. When I was looking at it earlier, I thought it might have gone that way, but it actually is. Um, the wires goes horizontal. Pins go. Push that on there. Some people might glue that in. To me, so far, it just seems like a nice, nice push fit. Well, everything will be held in place once the two halves of the rudders come together. Yes. Fit the tail light. 7007 into the recess in part 7001 so that the flat end of the light butts up to the LED 7011 as shown on in the inset right. I found that this was a very strong push fit myself. Mine just slip, slips in the nice and easy. Mm. Uh, 
There we go. And now that you've got that in, you can bring back the rudder hinge, the rudder trim tab, and put that back in place. Yes. With a little detail up. And now Why step. You've got to assemble the three parts together and then put it on one side. Uh huh. Now, step 12 identify how the right side rudder part 7002 fits on the left side 7001. Eight large sockets on part 7002 fit over the pins on part 7001, shown circled in blue. Check that all the details are correctly positioned, then apply glue to the eight large sockets in part 7002 and fix the rudder parts together. Right, okay, you've got a circle on there, circle there, circle there, circle there, one there, one there, one there, one there. I need to try a bit of glue in these holes. Of course, if, if all components were actually fitted to this one, I'd have done straight out the um, tube. Mm -hmm. you, you're going to turn this piece up and over. Glue probably start dripping out the holes. Well, unless it's a really viscous super glue, it really shouldn't be a problem. Enough. Turn that over. Should go together quite nicely with a bit of a satisfying click. Yeah, there's a nice click in the area. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, that's nicely assembled. Okay, then we can move on to step 13. Identify part A on frame 7005 and note that there is a pin on one end. Cut the part from the frame and fit it into the recess in the rudder part 7002. Glue in place as indicated. I've left a bit of sprue on there because then I've got to cut off a little pin off there. I'm thinking mm -hmm. I can actually hold that a bit more easier trying to glue that on there. That's my plannery. It's something more I can hold on to. Try and mm -hmm. do that on to that. That's the way I'm going to be doing it. Of course, I don't always cut it all the way off. And... Oh, 
I'm thinking a way of trying to still hold the small item and turn it over and place it in place. Uh, let's move this through. There we go. And that completes the assembly of the rudder. And uh, now we would be moving on to step 14. Uh, for which is going to be a slight bit of a problem for you, I guess, Adrian, since you had an accident with your model. Yeah, I, my original piece I've actually assembled gone flying off somewhere. It's lucky I have an extra one. But step 14. Hold the rudder assembly vertically against the rudder supports, 6801. The tabs on the hinge part, 7010, fit into slots in part 6801 as indicated. The LED cable, 7011, should run beneath the horizontal part of the tailplane on the left side. Actually, assembling it this way, the way you've got it, is easier than actually having that on the model and having it yeah. up vertically. Nice, nice and flat there. Okay, now, step 15, remove the fixing plates E from frame 7006 and smooth any roughness where they were connected to the frame using a fine file or sandpaper. Position the fixing plates over the hinge part 7010 as indicated so that the screw holes in part E are aligned with holes with holes in part 6801. Take one off. I'm going to assemble the top one because that's lying lying down nicely, perfectly. Because mm. this end's slightly high up compared to the aircraft one. Right? Um, so I just try and remember where I've got where I've put my screwdriver. On. Right, because then we move on to step 16, which says use two PM 2 by 4 millimeter screws to fix each of the connection plates E in place on the rudder support 6801. This is where things went a bit pear-shaped for me when I assembled mine. I lost one of the fixing plates and had to scratch build a, a new one to get my rudder on. But then uh, the other day the original turned up, so I'll have to uh, put that on in place of my scratch build piece. Let's 
move that slightly. Now I've shifted that one. I've anchored that part. Now I'm going to cut off the other one. Slide that one on top. And grab the screws on this one. So I've put these in screws in so far. Then I'm going to go for two, all four of them, tighten them all up. Shouldn't give you any issues, and you should have a nice free swinging rudder. It'll be nice swing, but don't forget you've got the cable. So basically, it swings nice swing that way, but don't forget you've got the cable, of course. Yeah, that does interfere just a just a tad with the uh, the swinging, but it should move nicely. How about lighting that tail light up for us again? Not sure. It's shame that cable don't should lie on with that that slot there. If it was, it might swing a little bit better. Well, that's a little bit better, yeah. Yep. I'll plug the light back in again. Oh, now isn't that a lovely thing? Yes. Nicely done. Very nicely done indeed. Perfect. Okay, that's nice assembled. Mm -hmm. And that is completed work. The rudder, complete with details and tail navigation light, has been fitted to the tail plane. The two parts D on frame 7006 will be fitted in a future issue. Right, okay. Put that back in the tray. Let me just quickly get the aircraft and just quickly put that on, on the back of the aircraft for a moment. A little bit of chat from Matt Chris. 
we really need the circuit board to attach all these plugs in now. I imagine we should be getting those with our, our next shipment of parts. Yeah, some and, of them too as well. And a little from John's model making. That would be great, Dave Mac. I would imagine that would be coming in the next set of parts that we get. There we go. I'll put the four screws in there later. I'll pick that back on there later. Yep. And Dave Max says it certainly would at John's mom liking. You read that one up. It's that's a finish view image. And that's going to be next week's parts. Yes, coming in issue seventy one. Your next set of parts: two sections of frame, wires to connect the rudder brackets, guides, and fixing screws. Yes, I imagine one of those two wires will be for operating the rudder. I reckon it could be three wires there. Because I reckon that's one piece of wire. Because it looks like a gap there. Unless then that's an illusion picture, basically there's a break in there. I oh, yes, I see. I see what you mean. It does look that way, but I think that that's an optical illusion myself. So that might be from the, the flash of the camera. Yeah. So one will be for the rudder. Yeah. Yeah. One will be for the rudder, and one will be for the elevator. I should imagine. Yep. Hopefully. Yeah. And another bit of chat from uh, Chris, and also the extension for the engine. I imagine that would be coming too, and yet another opportunity for a label on a cable. Stay tuned to this station and see what happens. And now it's time to move on. To the Terminator. This being final issue. We assemble the remote control and learn how to use it to control your model. And another bit of chat from Dave Mack. Watch this space laugh out loud. Yes. Okay, whenever you're ready, we can do your parts list check. Okay. Okay. Scroll down here just a second. Ah, here we are. List of pieces. We have 120 
dash one remote control case front. Yep, that looks like it. Got some print at the bottom there. The Terminator. And then we have 120-2 remote control case back. Yep, including springs for the battery and a wire for the plug on it. Oh, it's nice that they have all that in there for you. Yes, it's probably all basically slightly fiddly. Or, you know, the amount of steps you've got to say in instructions. It was probably easier for them to do it, put them in there. Mm-hmm. 120-3, the battery cover. One battery cover. Including screw hole. Then we have 120-4, control buttons. Yep. No. That is not 120-4. That is 120-6. Oh. You're looking for I'm... a sprue. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. It, it, there you go. It's the order you put the images in. The order, you know, you think, right, okay, from left to right. But they always go all over the place. Right, okay, that's... Yeah, bit higgly-piggly, yeah. Yeah. The... Then we have 120-5, transparent elements. Not that one. <laughs> You're rushing things just a tad, Adrian. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's this one, yes. Transparent elements, there we go. Yeah, it's basically you've got some poly LEDs on the circuit board in there to light up them. Mm-hmm. And then finally, 120-6, the circuit board. Yep. And um, printed in the circuit board, the area that just down there. Flat side, including that side there. Mm hmm Then we have 120-7, five PB, two by four millimeter screws, one being spare. Yes. I've put the spare one away already. And then we have 120-8, 2PM, two by six millimeter screws, one spare. Yep, that's the other one. And then finally, we have 120-9, two M2 nuts, one being spare. Yes. Actually, I'm going to use a longer screw to actually fit it in the slot, basically. Then you get it perfectly angled, right? Yep. So I'm leaving them glue it in place. You will also need a fine crosshead screwdriver, your model on its stand, super glue and a cocktail stick, fine file or sandpaper, and two AAA batteries. Yes. Alrighty. Oops. There we go. Step one, take the front of the remote control case 120-1 and identify the openings for the four clear elements on part 120-5 as shown by the arrows. One's pointing there, one's there, and there. And there. Uh, yep. Step two remove the four transparent elements from frame 120 5 and check the fit in the openings. Remove any rough edges with a fine file or sandpaper. One at a time, apply a little glue to the rims around the edges of the parts and fit them into the front of the case, as shown in the inset. Right, that's one cut out. Oh. 
and cut them all off first. Right, how am I going to bring these in? I'll probably put a bit of glue on the on the fascia, then push these in place. Another way to do it would possibly be put the uh, parts in place and then just dab a little glue around the outside. Yes. Got to kind of be careful with clear parts because super glue can fog them. I'm just testing these two to see which is the best fit out of both of them. Yeah, that's a bit of fit out then. Right. I'm going to put a bit of tab of glue at both ends. Sounds like a good idea. Just a bit of chat from uh, John's model making. I believe Arnie has a stand doubling up as a Zimmer frame. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, let's put that one aside for a moment. Hopefully, don't do anything for that in the next stage. Well, step three, we have another one of those identify the various control buttons on frame 120-4. One and two are one and two, which are located at the bottom, as we're looking at the sprue right now, are the up and down buttons for the jaw. Then we have yeah. th three and four, which you would think would be next in line, but aren't. But the these are the left and right buttons for the eyes. Right. 
Then we have button five, which is all the way up at the top of the sprue in the middle, which is the light for the eyes. Then we have number six, left hand side towards the bottom, which is the power button. Then we have seven, eight, and nine, which are for sound, for the sounds. That's seven there, there's eight there, and there's nine there. Yep, they're kind of all over the place. Then yes. We, then we have 10 and 11 for the, the blue searchlights in the base. That's and nice 12 and 13 for the red searchlights in the base. Yes, and that's those two there. Okay. You don't actually see it, but you can't really see it for easy. It is actually got a slight red print on it. Yeah, you can kind of see that in the uh, photograph in step four, that those have uh, red and blue markings on them. One at a time, remove the parts from frame 120-4, smooth any rough edges, and then fit them into the appropriate holes in the front of the remote control case 120-1. Do not use any glue. The inset shows the buttons in place for reference, but do not turn the assembly over at this stage. That's wise advice. <laughs> Another bit of chat from John's model making. Catch you later, guys. Great build with the spit, Adrian. Good night, all. Good night, John. Thanks for being with us. Yeah, thank you, John. So I'm going to actually, each time I cut one out, I'm going to actually pop it in place. No, it's the speaker ones. That looks like that one goes into that one there. Let's do the opposite side. Oh, no, no. Now for the final speak one for the middle. Speaker goes that way round, and if I flip it over like so, 
right should be correct very round. Actually, if I carefully got them all in there, Adrian. I put all those in. I've gone quickly, carefully, put the circuit board in place, and turn it over and compare the image. Yes, that looks all correct. Yes, indeed. So you've already essentially completed step five. Position the circuit board 120-6 over the buttons so that the contact points on the circuit board, not visible, connect with the buttons. Four holes in the circuit board fit over pegs in the front of the remote control 120-1. Because I haven't done all the buttons yet, because I was just double checking if the ones I put in was, you know, the correct way around. Right. Don't forget you've got to turn them over when you put them in. And make sure you turn the correct way around. Way around. Mm -hmm. Important button of all electronic gadgets is the on and off button. From this side, it almost looks like a, you've made a face. On the on button, there's a little glue at the top, and there's a little peg there. It's very see. So that can only go one certain way up. Yep. That's as that is a round circle. Basically, it's that middle one there, and those ones there, you could get them in the wrong order. That one could be the wrong way around, and they could be the wrong side. I can place the circuit board back in, make sure it goes over the uh, four pegs. Yep, I'm going to hold it in place. Oh. Ah. Oops. I <clears throat> Yeah, I didn't. So I check all the buttons again in the correct place. If you 
pretend we don't actually screw this on. Well, I think it'll all hold itself together in the end. Okay, you can put that to one side if you're ready to, and we can go on to step six. I just want to check all images in the correct place. Okie dokie. Sound plan. Right. Yeah, that, one's up, that one moves down. That's because that one's right. They're all going the same way. The two blue ones there and the two red ones that way. Right, okay. That's all correct. Turn that one back over. Yes. Okay. Step six, take the back of the remote control 120-2 and identify the hexagonal recess where an M2 nut will fit. Use a cocktail stick to apply a little glue in the recess and fix the nut in place. It goes down there. Mm -hmm. I'll take the KM two times sixteen one and screw it on there because then it's somewhere it's nice and easy so I can easily push it back into the hole and it'll be correct angle. Yep, makes a great handle. There you go, let's nicely push that down there. Alrighty, then step seven. Position the front and back of the remote control side by side so that you can plug the connector from the back 120-2 into the socket on the circuit board 120-6. As indicated, see the inset. I'm keeping one end up, this, this is popped up because I don't know how far those buttons stick out. Well, the picture in the instructions show them being right next to each other. Yeah. Sneeze. <laughs> you know. So I'm going to take the circuit board off there. Well, that might make it a bit easier, yeah. Yes. And then you've got two items you can move around. It can be a bit difficult getting those connectors together. Yes.
Carefully, you don't knock all your buttons out there. I'm just using the plunger just gently, just squeezing that plug down, and I'll know it's just create an extra force to it. Right, okay. Down there again. Okay, then step eight is position the remote control back 120 2 on the other part of the remote control 120 1 so that the circuit board 120 6 is enclosed. Leave on the knees through. And I reckon this is one of the small ones. So I'm going to get that screw ready, A screw ready. Right. Because you can pretty much guess what step nine is going to be. Make sure all your buttons are still in. Yes, they are. All right. Holding squeeze together. And step nine then is fix the two parts of the remote control together using four PB two by four millimeter screws. One down. One down, three to go. At least now that circuit board is screwed in good. Well, I'm still squeezing it together well. Right. Turn it around. I have put a link in the description of last week's issue of the PDF file and this week's issue of the PDF file. If anyone hasn't built it yet or haven't got the issue yet, if they want to study instructions before they get the part, always a handy thing to do. Guess. Okay, I'm happy to answer those screws. Alrighty then, step 10. Fit two AAA batteries into the recess in the back of the remote control, taking care that they are the correct way round, as shown. Fit the cover over the batteries and fix the cover 120-3 in place with a PM two by six millimeter screw shown in the inset. The screw goes into the nut that was fitted in step six. Always the negative always goes against the spring. And the that is correct. Goes against the metal plate. Ah. Okay. That 
pack it down there like so. Stick my screwdriver up on one end. Cool. That arm button is very sensitive. <clears throat> All I have to do is like touch it. And... Oh, it all lights up. Yes. And it's very that... sensitive on and off button. Hmm. And that is not only stage complete. That's the entire build complete. And now for the moment of truth. Will it all work? That is the question. So we move on to operating your T-800 model. So I'm just I'm just going quickly cover the lens so that people don't get dizzy. And there he is in all his glory. Yeah. If we press on button, turn the power on. And if we go the lights. Come on, I did over. Your first instruction is after removing the head back plate and turning on the battery box 3-4, turn on the power button circled in the head by holding it down for a couple of seconds. The eyes will flash twice and remain on. Turn on the switch beneath the skull on the base and the remote control. Your model is now ready for remote control. Turning on the power button on the remote control lights up uh, remote control lights up the clear inserts your remote is ready to use. The three sound buttons run different soundtracks. After you switch off the power button inside the head, the switch under the skull, and the power button on the remote, the eyes will flash twice before shutting down.
Well, actually, before I sampled it, actually, I went and in fact through it basically. Right. I think some of the buttons are jammed, basically. Oh, that's a shame. So I might have to take it apart and I did actually before I assembled it, I did actually plug the power on the batteries in it. I had it all working. Well, what we have here is the not ready for prime time terminator. <laughs> Probably what's happening is actually one of the buttons are jammed on. That's why it's not want to work. While you're dealing with that end, we do have a little bit of a little bit of chat. Okay. We have uh, Dave Mack, two great builds and show guys. Well done, Adrian. Then we have Dave Mack again with a bunch of thumbs up. And finally, he says, are the batteries in the base okay? Yes, they are. Looks like you got the searchlights working. Yes. What I had done, I actually... Um... That's the eyes moving left and right. Camera a little bit closer to Terminator. Uh, 
and draw works. All buttons on a remote does work. I reckon one of the buttons is, is getting jammed. Turn that one off. I'm going to change that angle. I'm going to have to read go through that remote and having a look. Well, perhaps what you could do is get her working good and uh, can show it all working on next week's show. Yes. A little bit of chat from uh, not Chris. Nice to see it working after all that. And uh, he asked the question, now it's finished, where are you going to put it? Laugh out loud. That's a good question at the moment. Yeah, I'm gonna to have to go and check all those button bases just to make sure they're not. Some of them could be slightly long, and of course it's spacey, just probably jamming the button on. Because that on and off button is very sensitive. Mm -hmm. Make sure you got all the sprue nip cleaned off too. Yeah, I might I might file some behind the on button off down a bit. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to carefully look through that and basically and double check them all. See which ones actually doesn't feel you know when you press them it just you can actually hear that sort of feel that little click. Mm -hmm. But with the on button you don't. So I'm gonna have to gradually go through them all and check them all. Yeah probably not a bad idea at all. Yeah, it's probably everyone else had the same problem. Depending you never on who, know. who has got the patient, you know, assemble it. Hang on, there's a fault here. Or you don't want to take it apart again and double check it again. Mm -hmm. Right, it's the same I can actually show you actually pressing the button and showing you because, as I show you, I've actually took the front off basically so I can physically press the buttons. Because I reckon some of them is getting probably getting one of them is probably jamming the button on, and of course then the remote is actually it's it's got the connection. See when you, you're pressing that one, now you're trying to press that one. This could be causing a problem in that way. Yeah, it could be. Could very well be. Hopefully, we don't have to run into that problem with the, with the Spitfire one. It depends how that remote works. Yeah, it depends on. Uh, well, I imagine you you would have to have a button, I would think, for uh, turning lights on and off, and a button for turning the motor on and off. Yes. And uh, I wonder exactly how the uh, flight dynamics are going to work. Is the base going to basically work on its own, or are we going to have any? manual input to climbing and diving and banking and whatnot we'll have to see yes that's that's a good question oh yeah you have like you know banking to the right and it's, it's in that pose for a while or banking to the left mm -hmm. or as soon as you turn it off will it be easy will it be programmed to set that back to a certain level yeah. We won't know until we get the model. That, that yeah. stage. We won't be there till we get there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you again for your assistance. Well, 
No problem. Outstanding work today, Captain Langley and Eagle Squadron. Off now to debrief and a helping of tea and caramel wafers. Hope you all enjoyed the show today. Yes, I hope everyone enjoyed the show. It's goodbye from both of us. Goodbye. Bye-bye.